and it'll be your guys' first postseason appearance in, in a couple of years, obviously. Just how much does that mean to you after everything we've already asked you about this year? Yeah, no, it's, it's uh, this game kind of mimic our season. I mean, a lot of things, a lot of crazy things happened to us. We were getting, we were getting punched left and right, and we just somehow just kept battling and, and coming up with a, a play here and a play there. We had, they had us on the ropes early. They had us on the ropes middle of the game. They had us on the ropes towards the end. But we, we just kept getting up and fighting for one another. And this is, I've been talking about brotherhood for a while now. And this group is, gives a really cool definition of brotherhood. And I get to see it firsthand. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of the group, but it, it's been, it's been really cool to see. I mean, I would not want to go through a season like this again. Uh, just the fatigue factor alone is, is driving me crazy and being, you know, alone on the road. And, you know, it's just, a, it's a lonely life as a head coach as it is. And with COVID, it even got even lonelier, but it's, uh, I love the fact our guys just kept battling. I'm proud of them. And I could not ask for a better group of guys that just compete and celebrate each other, celebrate each other's success. Yeah. Hey, Scotty. Um, Brad looked so like he had aggravated it again in the first half, or if he hadn't, he was, it was, it was still bothering him. What was the discussion like at halftime between you and him? I don't know if, if medical Daniel was, was involved in it to, to keep him out there and keep him playing the second half. Yeah. I mean, he, he felt, I mean, we knew, you know, like any, you come back in any injury, you got, you have to test it. And I cannot say enough about Brad's toughness. And he, I mean, he obviously is so skilled and athletic, but the four years I've been in here, there's not a lot of guys that have his mental toughness and his focus and his determination. He's, he's been put under a very, very difficult positions, you know, with our injuries in the last three years. And he had to really lead us, our group by himself. And now he has a partner. But he is that that mental toughness that he has, man. That 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 show tonight, because you know when you first go on the game, you can prepare and you can yeah. do all your treatments around the clock, and he has, and and it's all you know it's an educated, scientific, I guess, combination of everybody's best guess, and we're gonna put our players in the best position. But he has the final say, and he wanted to play, and I really I did not know until like thirty. 30 something minutes on the clock. And I was actually deep down in, in my, I was preparing him not to play. And, and he comes in and says, he wants to go. I just, man, that gave me a, a, a jolt. And I'm disappointed that we didn't have a better start, but just knowing how, what we went through this season, this was the start that we had to go through to get what we wanted to at the end of this game. But Brad's toughness is, I mean, I, I say it all the time that and he, he chews nails for breakfast. He knows how, he knows what, and he doesn't show it. He doesn't like to show it because he's really, he's really a reserve guy. But his, that inner drive that he has is just—I mean, his, he should be proud. We're all proud of him. Training staffs did a great job of getting them ready because that's you know it's eight days from his uh, strain. Did, and do you at any point at halftime ever think of going to him and, and saying, "Look, are you really? How much do you really have left?" Do you say maybe maybe this is you gave it what you could in the first half. Maybe we need to shut it down and win it without you in the second half, or do you just leave it up to him? Yeah, you know, I, I really looked closely throughout the game. I know that the, the, the start, it, it didn't seem like his body was ready. It was, it was kicking in yeah. uh, right away. But I thought, I thought the shots that he had, they weren't shots that he was laboring. They were shots that we were coming off of, coming off of pin downs, attacking one, two pull-ups. Those are those are things I was looking closely at, as long as our you know our medical they're the experts on you know the gait and the body movements and all of that. But I've been around enough athletes I know when I see somebody that shouldn't be out there, and it was great to him. But I knew I one thing I know about Brad, I don't look at him when I take him out of out of games because I know he's angry and he's angry at me because he wants to play. But I was trying to stay with our structured plan with a little bit of wiggle room. But then we talked to our training staff and they've talked to him and they said, he's ready to go as many minutes as we need. And that, you know, that second half, and I still wasn't going to, you know, play him throughout the game, even though I would have wanted to, but I, but I knew that he was going to come back and, and give us some great minutes. And, but I thought the shots in the first half were, 
not shots that you were worried about him, you know, hurting himself. They were shots that were aggressive. They were, they were forceful and they were, it just didn't go in for him. And, but honestly, he hasn't really done a lot in the last week of touching the basketball other than the last few days. Fred. Hey, Scott. Um, what, what did Ish do tonight just to give you guys such a, such a bump? Well, I, I think I, what he did was he made, he made the defense collapse a lot. And his jump shot was falling. His, mid, his layups were falling. And we needed Ish to play a little bit, I'm not going to say crazy, but a good crazy. And he, when he does that, he puts a lot of eyeballs on, on, on his attacks. And when you collapse, and I thought, I thought our shooters got some pretty good looks. Um, and, you know, they didn't make enough of them, but they were good looks. But it was Ish and Russell, their dynamic play allowed our shooters to get some good looks. And, but Ish, Ish, was, Ish was really good tonight. He attacked, he got to the paint, but it was, it was great. It was a great effort by him. And, and I'm just curious, now that you are done with the regular season, uh, yeah. normally, you know, I know uh, uh, video coordinators and assistant coaching staff is, is prepping for maybe one or two playoff opponents during a normal, the old circumstances, right? How have you guys handled internally just the fact that you could play one of, like, there are just a million different scenarios in terms of prepping for an actual playoff game? Yeah, I mean, it's, the bottom line is once, I mean, you don't have a lot of sleep during the regular season. Now you have no sleep. My eyes are going to be probably much more red than they are now. Uh, but that's what we love. That's what we care about. That's what, this is our job. We're passionate. I got a great group of coaches that, that have stuck together and, and fought through it. And, you know, we're, we're the eighth seed. And we, now we know who we're going to play. But, you know, I'm actually, I, I mean, I'm with, I'm with the king, man. Why do they have this playing thing? Whoever did that, they need to be fired. Just it's ridiculous. No, I'm kidding. I, 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 I actually, I, I really believe, I love this, man. It, can, it created so much excitement the last two weeks. And as we all know, anytime you can create excitement and meaningful games and the last 10 games of the season is great for everyone involved, fans, TV partners, everybody. And I, I love it. Even though now that we're the eighth seed, I still love it. It gives us a chance to, to go to a, a, a play against a great team like Boston and, and who knows what can happen, but we have to win, you know, one to one to advance out of the two. So it's great. It's a great, I mean, I'm, I'm excited that we fought all year long and we stuck together. And that's to me, I will always remember the group because it was, trust me, it was times and it was like, man, is this, how much, how many, how many, how many more things can go against us? And, but we still battle. We had a lot of injuries, a lot of health and safety protocol things, and just a lot of crazy, weird stuff that happened to us that you guys probably don't even really know either, but we battled. Joe. Hey, Scott. Uh, my question was going to kind of be along those lines. Like, I remember being on your Zooms in the dead of winter and, and you're meeting your players in a parking lot to get tested and you can't play, you can't practice. And it just, it sounded like a Orwellian dystopia. And, and now look at you, you're, you're the eighth seed. And so you just said how trying it was and how much you guys have had to endure. So I guess I'm wondering, did you take a moment after the game today in the locker room to just to note this and to celebrate how far you've come and what you actually accomplished? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely going to uh, enjoy my walk back home tonight. Um, I have my daughter in town, so that's going to be even a, a better walk. She raises up the, the looks of the, of the, of the group. Um, but I, I'm proud, and I'm really proud, man. This has been uh, for everyone. I'm actually proud of the whole league because they, they made some tough decisions throughout this to start the league up throughout the league and it put a lot of us in some really tough positions I mean I took a test last night at 11 30 and my old butt did not be need to be 
uh, out at 11:30 at night, but we had to. We had to do what's best for the league, and we all did it. And and the greatest, the best text I got all day was from our medical staff that all the players got the test, and we got it by midnight. And and I responded, like, "Thank you. That was that was a great text." But definitely going to enjoy it. But we don't have. We didn't want to fight this hard just to say that we're in the play in game and at the HC, we want to keep moving and keep playing better. And I think we have, we, I think we have another level of play that we can get to. Thank you. Thank you. Matt Paris. Now that you do know that it's Boston, what do you think about the matchup and just the turnaround? Yeah, I mean, it's a great matchup. I want to make sure that um, that little, uh, what's that? How are you guys? That dunker spot on the left floor, that, that place is, that, that floor is mopped up pretty good, that spot that where Brad slipped. Um, but, yeah, no, we play, them, we play them tough, and they play us tough. It's going to be a, a great game. It's going to be a great game. They got a lot of good players, and, but we do too. So um, it's going to be a challenge, but our guys are going to step up to the plate uh, and, and take the challenge. It's, we, know what, we know what we're up against, but we're 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 happy to be here but we're not a happy team just because we're here thanks kellen hey scott uh brad was saying on like the post game tv interview that the team clicked at the right time and then with the team finishing 17 and 6 that was who the, the team really is I, I guess what did you think of his his, his assessment and how do you think the, the team clicked at the right time? Yeah, I mean, because we stuck, st stayed together. When you stay together, a lot of good things happen on and off the court and in any, in any facet of your life. And, you know, you got you to gotta challenge yourself to keep doing the right things and, and don't change because things don't go, go your way. Just, you know, stay tough. Don't ask for anything. Just go out and earn it. And that's what we did. Like, I can't say enough about Brad. I mean, I know Russell does a lot of amazing things and he gets a lot of credit and he deserves a lot of credit. But what Brad did tonight, man, it, and I have a lot of admiration for him and his family and for what he did tonight. It takes it, takes it. I don't even know if he could have gotten to another level with me, but he's at another level. And I'm, I'm excited that, that, that he got rewarded with some big big plays for us down the stretch some big free throws but uh, i i couldn't ask for like i said we got some really good players and that can lead us on and off the court but it's it's been a crazy year and we're, we're excited to be where we are having the comeback what what is it about you guys as a group that allows you not to hit panic mode when you do have those deficits, whether it's over the course of a season or in a game like this? I think we do a great job of looking to each other, um, looking to Russ, looking to Brad to keep us together, to keep us um, grounded but motivated. And and um, Ish had a really big game tonight. I know you guys are kind of the, the vet role players in, in the locker room. What's it like to see him go off like that in a game this important? That was a lot of fun. You know, we know we can do it, but every time he does it, it's still it's still a lot of fun. Ava? Robin, you're not the first one who's kind of brought up the, the team's chemistry as something that's kind of helped keep you guys together this year. When do you feel like that reached, like, peak chemistry or, like, I don't know, Scott Brooks called it brotherhood? Um, that's hard to say. You know, uh, I think when you go through tough times, that's something that, you know, you're either, it's kind of cliche, but people say you're either going to separate or you're going to come together. I think we bonded a little bit when we went through those rough periods we had and we, we came out stronger for it. And do you have a turning point in your mind? We obviously know April 5th was kind of the, the day that since you guys have won 16 of the past 22, but do you in your mind have a turning point as to when you guys kind of point to here's when things started going well for us? Um, it's hard to say. I don't think guys have really been looking back, but um I think you, you can credit a number of things, our chemistry overall, um, Russ, Brad, uh, the way everybody's been playing. Gap has been giving us some huge minutes. Alex has had some big games. Um, Garrison, AG, you can go down the list. 
Neil. Hey, Robin, not only tonight, but you know, earlier in the season, a lot of opposing coaches will try and say, oh, you're traveling on a lot of your hook shot moves. How has your footwork progressed and developed just so that, you know, you're playing within the rules and able to get all those off? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm not quite sure myself. Um, some, some kind of harnessed insanity, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know. I've never stopped and thought about it. I'm not sure I could ever elaborate on that. Thanks, Robin. Sorry, I couldn't be any clearer. Brad. Robin, you're a creative guy. I'm just curious what your thoughts are on the play-in tournament as a whole and just kind of the craziness it adds to everything. I'm sure you've already got enough of, oh, wait, we're the eighth seed. The, the play-in tournament is uh, blight on the NBA, on NBA culture. But uh, I think it's been exciting. It's been exciting to follow. Um, on you know to watch the west to watch the teams in the east um i'd say for the second season of playing game it's been to me it's been a success it's been a lot of fun i think and and you've you've played in the postseason before there's such a lead up in the postseason in terms of like scouting getting to know an opponent and especially throughout a series obviously you haven't gone through the plan yet but has it has it been different might it be different in preparing for a single game situation in terms of scouting and that kind of stuff uh, as opposed to going through a series? That's a good question. Um, perhaps. I think every, I think everybody's approaching it as another playoff game. Um, I, I assume Boston is that uh, we are. Uh, it's hard to say, honestly. Ish, um, we're hearing a lot of, of comments on your guys' chemistry and brotherhood and everything like that after this game. Why has that been important for you guys, especially in this last kind of chunk of the season? I think that's important in uh, team sports, because uh, I think the chemistry amongst each other is like the most important thing. I know people look at the X's and O's and the different things like that. But I think the chemistry that you build amongst each other, um, if you do that off the court, it shows on the court. And I think that's what everybody is seeing, you know, in these last 25, 30 games, the chemistry has been, you know, slowly but surely built off the court. And now you see it on the court, trusting each other, um, building each other up, getting on each other, and people not taking it personal. Um, so I think it's important in, in team sports. I think it's important in families. I think it's important in, in uh, every situation that you do when there's uh, two or more people involved. I obviously know you guys went through a lot together this season, but you also weren't able to like hang out that much or get to know each other that well. How did you build that other than just like going through all the COVID stuff and all of the craziness? Yeah, they, they calmed down on the COVID or stuff, <laughs> on the COVID of protocols. And with that, you know, obviously uh, we're kind of coming out of it slowly but surely. We're still not, you know, out of it, but, you know, things are getting better. Um, and, and so with that being said, we have been able to kind of spend a little bit more time with each other, talk in the locker room, in the training room, um, you know, when we go on the road, on the planes, uh, just kind of build that camaraderie. And, and, you know, I think that's been – uh, probably the biggest thing and everything got thrown together so quick, you know, this year. And so people have to put that in perspective. And, uh, and now, you know, we're hitting our strides. It's a blessing. We just got to keep going. Matt Paris. Hey, Ish. Uh, this may be a little silly question, but like, do you believe this streak that like you guys are 17 and you guys are 17 and six since April 5th? Like, does that, some like message or anything like that going into the plan, like that you guys are a more dangerous team because of the streak? Uh, I don't know what other people think at all. I, I don't know, Matt. Uh, I guess for us, it's a confidence builder that we're playing well. Uh, everybody else, uh, they're going to probably think and feel how the way they you know, feel and they're going to prepare for us. But uh, for us and our chemistry and how we've been playing, uh, you can see it, you can feel it, the confidence that we're kind of building amongst each other. Um, and uh, any in ourselves, and so I think that's what's been the probably biggest and most important thing. As far as people been on notice, I don't know. I, I've, I've learned to kind of worry about the things I can control, and uh, that that you know relieves me of a lot of stress and anxiety. All right. Does that confidence translate then, like to the fourth? Like, are you, do you see that kind of play out on the floor? Hi, Matt. I can't hear you, bro. Oh, did you see that confidence kind of translate to the floor in the fourth quarter? You said, does it translate to the floor? 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, no, I think it does. I think it, my fault, I can't hear you. Uh, I think it does translate to the floor, just that confidence and how we're kind of playing and, and flowing. And, and uh, so uh, we got to keep it going. Helen. Hey, Ish. Um, Scott Brooks was saying kind of like just a lot of challenges behind the scenes with all the protocols and I'm sure like the health issues with the team and stuff that he said that you know, the public doesn't even know about. What was the biggest challenge for you and in your mind for the team this, you know, this regular season? Yeah, um, it's been difficult. But, you know, we're not probably the only team going through it. Uh, every team is going through it. And I think what has happened for us, we've kind of gotten in the rhythm of every day and what you got to do. And so uh, we're all, you know, a product of routine. I think once we've kind of gotten into the routine, it's been a lot. At first, it was, it was very frustrating for everybody, very frustrating to everybody that was a part of the organization. Uh, and uh, I think what has happened is we've gotten in the rhythm of flow of what, what we're supposed to do and what time we're supposed to get tested and what's the rules, what's the protocols and different things like that. But at first, it, it, it threw us off, and, and I'm sure it threw a lot of people off. I mean, it was a stretch, like seven to eight games when, I mean, uh, seven to eight guys had COVID. It was a stretch where guys got hurt, guys got banged up. So we've been through a lot. It's a blessing that we continue to push and press through. Um, but I, I don't want to, you know, be too, uh, you know, Debbie Downer because everybody's going through it. You know what I mean? So, uh, but it's a blessing that we've kind of pushed through and pressed through, and now we're in a position to uh, play into the playoffs. Appreciate it. Tried. Hey, Ish. Um, I know, I know you guys always take a lot of pride when the bench steps up in big moments. And I know that's something you get prideful about as well. Uh, what, what's it like to seeing you step up, Robin step up, and, and some other guys in a, in a moment like this? Right, that's our job. <laughs> that's, that's what we, you know. Um, and, you know, obviously early in the year, you know, I don't think I was doing my job as well. Um, and I still got so many other things that I can get better at. Uh, but that's what a team is all about. Uh, we know what Russ and B is going to do. Uh, but it's important. We know the star and Bob going to do, Rui, all those guys, uh, Alex. And uh, But for us, it's important, you know, for us, it's what makes a team. Come off, give that, you know, come off the bench punch and uh, keep everybody honest. And then those two take us home. And you, you've really – played much better than you did in the first half of the season after coming back from the injury. I know you tweaked your jumper a little bit. Do you attribute, do you attribute it to anything else? Nah, you know what, man, just, just chemistry, just learning how to play with everybody, being aggressive, not overthinking things. Uh, I don't know. Fred, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I try not to overthink it. Like I played like trash in the beginning of the season. So there was no other place to go, but up. So, uh, uh, what Cardi B say? It's up when it's up. So it worked out. Went up. Just after after all you guys fought through, and and I know you spoke to what it was like to get into the playing tournament the other night, but to be able to get up to to eighth in this sort of fashion, what what is that like for you guys? I um, mean, it's good. You know, we we like I've said all season long. I've always had the most confidence in everybody in the locker room. And always try to find ways to battle battle the storm or weather the storm and. Uh, you know, we, we got to give credit to to our coach, number one, because he's done an amazing job of making adjustments on the fly. And a lot of, a lot of times the players get all the recognition, but, uh, you know, Sky did a hell of a job. He's done a hell of a job of just being consistent and finding ways to, to make us better, uh, along with the coaching staff as well. And, you know, a lot of guys step up and a lot of great things along the way, uh, you know, to kind of get us back into this point where nobody uh, – you know, thought we'd be here, so. Ava? Russ, um, as you guys developed your your chemistry this year, how important was it for you to just be able to talk kind of plainly to each other and say, this isn't working and, and here's what we need to do to turn stuff around? Well, I mean, uh, there's no sugar coat. Sugar coat don't really get you nowhere in this game. Uh, I learned that a long time ago. And you know, my job as a, as a leader is to make sure that I'm straightforward with myself first. I'm being honest with myself, and then also being honest with my teammates to try to get the best out of them as we kind of uh, try to figure out, you know, our season out throughout the season. When do you guys feel like you reached the the type of chemistry that you need to have to make a run like this? Um, I don't know when or was that exactly, but 
you know, I think uh, that road trip, that LA road trip was a good road trip for us to kind of get our minds in the right place. And I thought that was a kind of a turning point for our season, um, in my opinion. Zach. Hey, Russ, uh, what would be your advice to young players like Rui, who's going to be playing at his first career NBA postseason game? Um, just to be himself. Um, you know, Rui is a hell of a player. He's done so many things. The second season, um, you know, he's not going to play perfect. None of us are going to play perfect. Um, and that's the reality. Um, I feel a lot of times, a lot of players, young players, put so much pressure on themselves that it's not needed um, because the reality of it, the game comes down to, you know, um, guys missing and making shots, and that's all a part of the game as well. So going out and having fun is the most important part that he should be worried about it. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Russ, over the years, you have played with and through a lot of injuries this time of year. And I just wonder, what, a, what does a player do to kind of get outside of themselves and deal with and adjust to playing when they're injured this time of year? Oh, you know, you got to rely, um, you know, your teammates rely on the staff, rely on um, just the guys around and rally you up. You know, it's, it's time of year. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are dealing with so many injuries, um, nicks and bruises. But, you know, you got to be able to have something from within and be able to go out and compete at a level that you, uh, you can't help, you know, your team win games. What is more difficult? Is it the physical limitation or is it pushing yourself mentally to kind of go past what you think you can do? Well, I mean, I only can speak from my personal experience last year. It's more physical, at least for me. Uh, that doesn't allow you to do the thing that you're able to do to help uh, your teammates out. It doesn't, and also mentally, because I know that I'm kind of letting my teammates down and not allowing them to see the best of me. Uh, and unfortunately, in the sports world, injury or not, uh, you know, the media, people judge you based on um, that particular time. Um, so it's kind of a, um, I think it's like a lose lose situation because if you don't play and you hurt, then, you know, it's a conversation. But if you play and you hurt and you play bad, it's like, oh, well, you know, can't play anymore. A conversation. So it's a combination. It's, it's a lot of things going on, honestly, DA. You know, I mean, mentally, you got to be mentally strong uh, because, you know, you got to be ready for when you, times you don't play well. And then if you do play well, People expect you to play well. So uh, mentally, it's, it's, it's a tough part. But as long as you got the right people in the corner, have faith, uh, which, which I lean on all the time, uh, everything else will take care of itself. Neil? Hey, Russ. Uh, at the end of the game, uh, you and Brad kind of you know shared a moment. I'm just curious what that was like after everything you guys have been through this season. Uh, just, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a good feeling not just for myself but Brad fighting through what he's going through at the moment and going out and laying on the line. You know, you, you appreciate guys like him and uh, you don't take his talent, his mental, anything for granted because uh, he wants to win and he wants to win bad and we'll do anything to kind of help his team out. And uh, that moment was strictly just to, uh, you know, let him know that I've appreciated him uh, you know, since being here and you know, we, we, we fought through so much to get here now, and nobody believed that we'd be here, and, uh, you know, it's only up from here. Thanks, Russ. Paul? Russ, congrats on the victory. So, Russell, when you look at this team, 17-6 and six to finish the season, is this the team you thought you had when you broke training camp? Oh, um, I've always had so much confidence in, in this locker room, regardless of personnel, regardless of – who we had or who we didn't have. I'm always confident in who we have and the things we're capable of doing. Um, and I knew all along that once we get it together and clicking and get healthy, uh, you know, we'd be a diff difficult team to beat. And um, I still believe that. Karita. Hey, Russ. Um, throughout the season, just because it's been so up and down, Coach Brooks has received some blame and some heat from fans. Can you speak from a player's perspective how he has contributed to the turnaround of this team? Yeah, like I just said, I just mentioned it earlier. Um, like I said, players get a lot of credit and a lot of credit because we don't afford it. But behind the scenes, Scotty is a, one hell of a coach, not just that, a person, and does an amazing job of making sure that we 
uh, bet a lot of stuff together because if it wasn't for him and his ability to be able to make decisions on the, on the fly, uh, make the right calls and, and, and put the right guys in and out of the game and, and put us in the right system to be successful, um, a lot of stuff wouldn't even be happening. So, uh, you know, all the outside noise, it really doesn't matter, um, honestly, because internally we know how important he is and I know how important he is to, to myself and to the team.